Hi, how's it going? This is Greg with HowToBuildGames.com. Today we're going to pick up where Lesson 1 left off. Uh, the main lesson, speaking of that, let me draw your attention over this side of the screen. I've started using some custom thumbnails on YouTube to distinguish because I'm going to end up having several different kind of tracks or well, there'll be playlists as well. So the main one, Lesson 1, the first lesson I did, building a game starting from scratch where you end up with a grid of cubes like such. That's where this one's going to pick up. That main course is going to be in blue and it's going to have the word main right there. The other thing, and the alternate off week courses are going to be red and say extra down here like this one, part one, getting started with the 2D workflow in Unity 4.3. That is a real video if you haven't seen that. Um, I recorded that a couple of weeks ago, just kind of poking around with some of the new features in Unity 4.3 that deal with 2D and sprites, and we are going to be building a different separate game from scratch over there. So if you haven't seen that lesson, make sure and check that out. I've got one more thumbnail planned. This is not a real video yet, but tips and tricks will be in green like that. I'm probably also going to have a yellow one uh, sticking with my primary colors. That will be uh, game design theory or game design and theory. People have asked me to kind of separate that out. I'm trying to take uh, all the suggestions that I've got and I've gotten some really good feedback and suggestions and incorporate those things. And so I'm, I think those will probably just about cover it between main, you know, the main lessons, the extra lessons, the tips and tricks, and then game design theory, something like that. That's probably going to cover just about all of it. I've got some really neat things planned for you guys over the next year or so. So just stick with it. I think I think it'll be worth your time. Anyway, trying to keep the chatter to a minimum. So let's get started. So let's go ahead and fire up Unity. We're at the same place we were last time. We've got a four by five grid of blocks. If you hit play, they change color. This is exactly uh, where we left off. To be consistent with what I had shown in the original video, I'm going to make one more row. I'm going to grab these cubes and Control D or Command D if you're on the Mac to duplicate and move those up just a little bit to have a 5x5 five five grid, which is what I had originally talked about. Uh, grab the camera. I'm going to pull that back just a little bit so we can kind of see it a little better. There we go. Now, as a quick note, one of the things, if you are going for a very specific look, one of the things you might notice, this is very 3D. And so because this block is basically in the center, you're not seeing all the sides of it. Because these blocks are a little below, you're seeing the bottoms. Because these blocks are off to this way, you're seeing here, you're seeing there, etc., etc. You can change that if you don't like it. Um, with your camera selected, what you would do, and I'm going to go ahead and save um, my scene. Over here on camera projection, you want to change it to orthographic. So instead of perspective now, it's going to be a flat 2D representation. Now you'll probably also notice that, oh, everything got super small. The way you adjust that is the size option here. And just clicking in the word size and dragging it, that's a super handy feature if you don't realize and you can do that just about anywhere and do that um, so you can move your size around and what you might notice well one things are not lined up very well and we'll we'll fix that in a bit two you don't see any sides of anything anymore now everything is complete orthographic which means I don't know, there's, there's probably some fancy definition um, basically you're just going to be getting the 2D representation width and height. So if you're trying to make something like Pong, this is a great way to do that. For now, for our purposes, that's not quite what we want to do yet. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that size at you know 4. That's a good view of what we've got on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and change this back to perspective. Everything goes exactly like we had it. So there it's really easy to see. Uh, the difference between orthographic and perspective where you can see the edges and things like that. So uh, um, all the other camera stuff is very useful but 
we're not going to mess with any of that stuff right now because we're here to build games and not mess with the camera so much at the moment. So with our 5x5 grid, the first thing I'm going to do is go back to our scripts. We got our block start script. Double click on that to open that up in mono develop. And so we see, got a mouse click, it prints out that debug message, changes the color to blue, mouse is up, changes the color to white. First thing I'm going to do is we're going to basically set this up so that all of these cubes go back and talk to a cube or a block manager. To make this, I'm going to go create an empty game object. That's there. I'm going to put it at 0, 0 just because I like to do that. That's not necessary. Um, I'm going to give it a special name, call it block manager. So I've clicked in there and done that. Now, one thing you'll notice over here in the hierarchy, it's alphabetical. It's always alphabetical. Uh, you can use that to your advantage if you want. If you want to call this, you know, cube number one and cube number two and so on. There are better ways to organize things, however. Among them being that you can create an empty game object and use it sort of like a container. So I'm going to grab all these cubes now and drag them so you see the little arrow uh, just like you're making a shortcut in Windows and now they're all under the block manager. So this is useful both for organization because now your scene looks much nicer. This is useful so that I can if I wanted to duplicate just one now I've got a 5x5 five five block uh, instead of just one, and pull the camera out so we can see that. And this is kind of what we'll be messing with later on. And all this stuff still works exactly the same as it did before, as I just click around randomly. Let me do that. Uh, hit the stop button, undo a couple of times, get back where we were. Don't need that extra set. Delete that. So it's handy to clean up your scene that way. It's handy to um, be able to create, you know, extensive hierarchies, and this can be nested as much as you'd like. Uh, this is the way you create prefabs down the road, stuff like that. Uh, what's important for now, though, is that there's a call we're going to use called send message upward, and so all these blocks are going to send a message to whatever the parent is. This is considered the parent. These are all considered the children. I'm just clicking and shift clicking to select all of them there. These are the children. That's the parent. And so when these have the proper script sending a message upward, it's going to go up to that parent. If these are uh, out here at the root and you send message upward, you're going to get an error because there's nothing upward to send it to. So let me undo that. Control Z, Command Z and let's change the script now if you hit play um, everything's the same because we didn't change anything we just put them into you know a new we called it block manager but for the moment it doesn't do anything so let's start with creating a new script so I'm over here in scripts I'm gonna right click I'm gonna create a C sharp script and call it Block Manager. Um, for the moment, I'm not going to do anything on there except drag it up to the Block Manager, click on it just to make sure it's there. Yep. Now we're going to go over here. Um, this Block Start, which just changes the color on the click, that's not a bad script to have around. I'm going to go ahead and leave that around and make something different uh, based off of it. What I'm going to do is, and this is a good workflow tip, um, with block start selected, I'm going to hit Control D or Command D and copy it. Now, I already get an error. The problem is that, one, we've already got a script named block start inside the class, but two, this name does not match that class, which always has to be the case. So, first, I'm going to click here and rename this and call this block um, change the color on click and you know 
you can call it whatever you want. You can call it change color. It doesn't matter. I'm also going to click one more time so that it's selected and hit Control C or Command C on the Mac to copy all that so I've got it exact. Now I'm going to double click on it to open it up in Mono Develop. Now, again, file name absolutely has to match the class name here. So I'm going to double click this whole thing, Control V, Command V to paste it. So now it's exact. I'm going to save it, click back over here, and the error message goes away. So all we've done is duplicate and rename that script. And then we're just going to leave that like it is. Now, because we picked this and duplicated it before we did anything to it, all of these cubes still have block start on them, which is what we want. So I guess I'll, I'll change it um, and just call it block at this point. And so then I'm going to, again, double click. And again, got to make sure that the class name matches the name up here. Let's save that. Now what we're going to do is, in addition to that, we're just going to make sure that it's sending the messages it needs to be. So I type in send, and we get some different things. Send message upwards. Send message and send message upward it's not the most efficient way to necessarily communicate things between game objects but it's an easy way to do it and unless you've got a lot of them and you're trying to run this on like an iPhone 3GS you're probably not going to notice you don't want lots of enemies in a big level doing this but you know until we get to that point when we get to that point we'll do things differently and properly for now this is an easy way to kind of wrap your brain around how things need to be set up and work. So with send, we're going to pick send message upward and it says, okay, we need a string. What that string is going to be is that's the message we want to send. And it's the method name, which means that that's the, the method or the function that it's going to call. And so when you click on the mouse here, we want to send the message that um, cube clicked and we're going to go down here do the same thing send message oh, delete that send message upward now at this point um, I'm using my up and down arrow keys to move through the four different types of messages I can send it's not super critical that you understand all of why this is happening just yet because some of these things it's going to be easier to show than to explain everything that's not because I don't want to explain it it's just because I think you're better off to do and understand why and how to change it and how to tweak it than necessarily all the technical stuff behind it. All that stuff is really important, but it, you can really get bogged down quickly in all that uh, in the beginning, and I don't want people to do that. So I'm going to send a message upward here to say cube released. So we got cube clicked and cube released. It's important to remember the capitalization on this and all that. Uh, case is very important in these names. So cube clicked, cube released. That's what we're going to do. That's saved. Control S, Command S. To go over here, we're going to go back to our block manager. Double click on the script here. Delete that. And now we're going to make a new function called cube clicked and say debug log a cube was clicked now I'm going to copy this whole function and cube released and change that and save so now anytime we click a block it's going to let the block manager know so move over to our console 
hit play. Got a mouse click, a cube was clicked, mouse is up, cube was released. So, hey, looks like it's working. Alright, so apparently if you have collapse on, um, you can click on things all day long and it just shows you, hey, you've got 20 of these. I don't know how that got turned on. So, uh, everything is working fine. And as we click, we see the different things. Now, the thing to note about all this, got a mouse click, that's coming from the cube. A cube was clicked, it's coming from the manager. Mouse is up, coming from the cube. Cube is released, coming from the manager. So if we look at the script, um, mouse click, this one was clicked, sends a message up. Mouse is up, sends a message up. And we could change the debug statements to so you could see it and prove it, but take my word. Um, it's doing what it needs to do. The next thing that we want to do, though, is we're going to go ahead and comment this out. So, And I realized uh, last time commenting was something I didn't mention. Um, to do forward slashes in front of a line, turns it into a comment. You see it's green. That means it's not going to run. You can do that to as many lines as you'd like. If you've got a whole bunch of them, you want to do a slash and a star and say, hey, this is a comment. And then you end that with a star and a slash. Um, and now you have a longer comment that is potentially more useful, although this one is not. So we're going to comment out different things. Um, debug statements, for example. So. Actually, uh, yeah, we'll leave those commented out. Um, what I want to do, though, is I want to move the changing color functionality from the block itself to the manager. So what we need to do is we're going to send the message upward, which we're already doing, cube clicked and, and uh, cube released. But we need to change it a little bit. So send message upward. We're going to send it the option and say, hey, it was the game object. Now, as I've said, a game object is something within Unity. Now, this part is super important. Game object with a capital G is any game object, and it is not a specific game object. This is useful in some instances, not this one. Game object with a lowercase g means this specific game object that it's coming from. That is super, super critical uh, to learn and remember. And if you do the wrong one, you're going to get some strange errors. Um, we'll do the same thing over here. Again, make sure you use the lowercase one. So we save that, we pop back over, we clear this, everything's fine. I'm going to put in the capital G um, just to see. And so one, it changes to be blue because it knows that is a specific thing it's waiting on. Um, and you'll get an error over here. So if you get this error, In this instance, it's because that needs to be a lowercase g. All right, we save, we go back, it recompiles, there's no error. So what this is saying is send a message that a cube was clicked and send a reference to which cube? To this cube. Alright, I'm going to copy that go over here just to comment it out uh, properly. It's released and a reference to this cube. So now what we've done is all these cubes that have this block script on them, when we click them, should send a message up that that particular game object was clicked. Now if these had different names, um, we could send that if we wanted. Sometimes that's what you want to do. You want to send a particular 
you know, maybe it's uh, you're doing a chessboard, and so you know e3 to you know e5 or whatever. Um, you could do that this way if you wanted to send the name. Um, in this case, what we can do now, since we're sending a game object up, and if you hit play, um, nothing is well actually yeah so nothing changes we need to um, set up the block manager to receive this game object reference and then we need to do something with it and again the object reference it's basically like an address to this object so each cube is gonna say hey a cube was clicked it was this one so let's go over here and now we're going to move away from the functions with nothing in them. I keep calling them functions. Technically, they're, they're methods. Um, functions is just an easier, you know, I started programming a long time ago, and there were not things called methods, but we started with functions, routines. So some of my terminology is a little old school. What we're going to do now is we need to tell it, just like over here, we're sending a game object reference. Now we need to receive it over here. So I'm going to say game object temp geo. Now, this is where it could get confusing, but it won't, but it could. What we're doing is we're saying, I want here, I'm going to be taking a game object called temp geo for temp game object. And you'll notice it's blue and it's uppercase. Like I said a minute ago, that means it's a game object. It's any game object. It doesn't matter. So what we can do now is we can go in and do anything we want to that game object. So, and let me demonstrate and then I'll elaborate. So now I'm going to take this and so this mouse down, um, renderer material color blue, I'm going to comment that out so that's not running anymore. You see, got a mouse click is not showing up anymore because we commented that out. Mouse is up, not showing anymore. So those are commented out. When it's commented out, it does not run. I'm going to make sure that I save. So I'm going to copy that, go over here, and paste it in. Uncomment. Now, here's where the magic happens. This in and of itself, render material color equals color blue. Um, if I just ran this like it is, it would affect the renderer material color of the block manager. And the block manager doesn't have one. What we want to do is insert temp geo. I just hit escape to close that up. What that's going to do is say, okay, this game object that you're sending me, I'm going to change the color of its renderer material color to blue. And again, this function doesn't care what calls it or what sends whatever game object it wants. The important part is that well, we're going to change the color to blue. Let me save that and then we'll watch it work. Just like before. So doesn't look very impressive yet. And just to make sure that it is actually working, we change the color to red. And again, that's in the block manager. So block over here. This is blue. It's even commented out. We'll even just delete it. Save that. Block manager, color red. Hit play. So now we know without a doubt that the cubes are communicating with the block manager. Let's go ahead and remove these debug statements. And this is a cool feature. So 
on any debug statement that you find. I mean, it gives you some details about where it's at. You can double click on that and Mono Develop will take you right there. Cube was clicked. We don't really need to see that anymore. Cube was released. That's working. We don't need to see that anymore either. So go ahead and kill those to declutter things. Save it. Um, so now we've got the cubes sending messages up to the block manager. This is good. This is very good. So cube clicked, changed it to red, and then remember cube released should change it to white. We're going to go ahead and control X or command X on Mac to uh, cut that, save it, go over here and again start with the same thing but remember we've got to start with temp geo and we can even type it from scratch if we want as long as we get it all white, right. Now uh, the color option you can do your own color. Uh, if you want to put in hex values and things like that, you can do all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to go into that right now, but there are some default colors in here. That's what we're using. That's where we get white and red and things like that from. So delete that. Um, but again, down here, we need cube released to be able to um, take a game object. So copied all that, go over these parentheses, do that, save it. So cube clicked and it's getting a reference to a game object and again that's kinda like its, its address and memory and then saying whatever that game object is, wherever it came from, doesn't matter. Change the color of the material on the renderer of that game object to red. And same thing when released to white. So clicked it sends the clicked message on mouse down, on mouse up, sends released. So now it should function the same way it did. Alright, so this is where it starts getting really interesting. Go back to the block manager. Now let's say rather than color red and color white, we want to change that up a little bit. Watch this. So now I'm going to add a couple of variables to the block manager. You see right here it just says script. There's nothing there. I'm going to say this is going to be a public. It's going to be a color. And I'm going to call it um, click color. And I'm going to make another one that is a public color release color. And so public out in front just means it's going to show up here once I hit save and go back over here. Color is the type of thing as the variable type and this these are the variable names. So let's save that move over here and you're going to see two color options pop up as soon as it recompiles. Click color, release color. What this does is this gives you the ability to change it to anything you want. So I'm going to click on this top and make that click color. Let's make that to be um, I don't know, kind of be orangey yellow and then the release color to be uh, well, a really ugly blue. Got to go back over here. Okay, we're still assigning this to color red and color white. We're going to change that now. Now I'm going to say click color. I'm going to put that over here instead. Now the thing that's important to note is that this variable type is the same as what this is expecting. You find that out, we delete that, and we type material dot color, we start typing that, and see where it says Unity Engine Color with capital C. That is the variable type it's expecting there. And so those things have to line up. You can't send this like a number and it picks it and does it right. So again, we'll get into more of that kind of stuff later on. Right now, even if you just follow along and don't fully understand everything, it should still give you the ability to start changing things. 
um, and start kind of seeing how it works. And now the release color, I go ahead and change that over here. Although we'll probably want to change that back to white in a minute so that at least it goes back to where it starts. So we got a click color or release color. Click, release, click, release. And so as I click on each one, you can see that it's changing them. Now we can change this back to white if we want to do that. So that you get the you know the one color on off. We can even change this while it's running. Although, again, note that any changes you make while Unity is running, when you hit that play button again to stop it, they're going to be reverted back to whatever you had as you saved. And so even this has some interesting potential. Um, I'm tempted to continue on because there's a lot more I want to cover, but people have really asked me to try to keep these lessons, you know, not an hour. Let me elaborate on something. Somebody, um, I'm sorry, I forget who, brought up that I should that I should show people what this renderer material color relates to. Click on these different things; they change colors. So let's let's take a particular block. All right, that guy right there. So top corner. That's going to be where I'm using my mouse wheel to move in on them a little bit. I click, I see the color change. What you're going to notice, since we've got them selected over here, it's an object, which we know. But look, it's got a renderer. And that renderer has some materials, in this case one. And that material has a material color. And so this directly correlates and is exactly what we're changing in the code. So I'm going to click over there. You can just click anywhere to dismiss the color picker window. So we can grab an object and change it, you know, uh, any way we'd like within the game scene. But the important part to note is that through the code we are changing the renderer material color. So watch, as I, I've got this selected, so that's the active one we're looking at over here. If I click on it, watch this. When I click, it changes. And when I release, it changes that back. And again, if I click over here in the scene view to select, it's going to do the same thing when I click over here in the game view. This is key to understanding how Unity does what it does. So if I say, oh, um, well, I, I know I've got this cube, and it, Unity doesn't care that it's a cube. It's a game object, which again is just kind of something that's there. And then the, this particular cube game object has a mesh attached. It has a collider attached. It has a renderer attached. It has our script attached. So if we wanted to take this particular cube and you know, turn off the box collider or make it a trigger, um, change the size of it, then we would look for you know, the game object collider is trigger functionality, for example. So I'll go back over here. I'll just tempgeo dot collider is trigger equals true. And we just determined, we guessed, when we used the IntelliSense, which is we're letting Mono develop finish out our thing for us. As I start typing, it picks each one. I hit tab to go to the next one. And so, and this tells me, hey, it's a Boolean. It's true or false, which makes sense because there's the checkbox over there. We delete that keep that um, and now we'll watch the is trigger go over to true and yeah, we'll even take it a step further and do that so that it's also false when we release and so now was it this third one yeah so now we're gonna watch this particular one watch the is trigger when I click 
and that is a key part of Unity, being able to manipulate these things over here within the code. Whether it's the color of material, um, shader type is a little more tricky, and some of the things get kind of tricky because, you know, you can't really say, oh, you know, it's this, um, it, you know, mobile, particles, alpha blended, whatever. Uh, there's not a number assigned to that. So some of the things, you know, like in drop downs, get a little bit more tricky to uh, relate and textures and things like that through the code. But the important part is to note that you can get to these things most of the time uh, in code. And you can change these things within the code. So I'm going to stop that because we don't want to mess with the triggers at the moment. I'm going to delete that just as the example. Um, the last thing I want to do, and this will take us very close to um, where I said lesson one was going to end. We're going to make a private variable, which means it's not going to show up in the block manager. And again, we're in the block manager code. Um, I'm going to call it click count. Oops, I messed up. You always have to tell it what kind of variable it's going to be. It's going to be an integer which is just, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Uh, no decimals or anything like that. Private int, click count. And I'm going to go ahead and start off by assigning it to 0. Save that. Actually, you know what? Let's make that public, and I'll show you why. So public int click count equals 0. And then every time something is clicked, we're going to say click count, which we've got in there now. It added that in. It knows that we're referring to that. Uh, equals click count plus one. That's the longhand way of doing it. The shorthand way of doing it is click count plus plus. And like everything else, it's got to end with a semicolon. So now every time we click, it's going to bump up click count by one. Let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to count our clicks as we click. We say, hey, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we go to Block Manager. There's our click count. Now, normally, you set something as public so that you can change it. In this case, I set something as public just as an easy way so that we're not spitting out debug statements over here, which we could, but, you know, again, I'm trying to show you different ways to approach the same problem. Uh, and so now, every time I click, I see that click count. And, yeah, and you can go over here and say, oh, I've got 538. Um, so maybe if this was, you know, missiles, and it starts out as 3, and you want to change it and it to be 300, um, which is a fun way to do things. That's, I remember a long time ago, you know, um, Basic programs, type it in, Star Trek game, photon torpedoes equals 3. Hey, what if that's uh, 300? Well, now I've got a lot of torpedoes. Klingons better watch out. But those little things like that, where you start seeing how you can manipulate things and change things and change the game, really make it a lot of fun. So, I think that's enough for this lesson. Um, I, again, I'm trying not to get too far ahead while still staying close to what I originally said I was going to do. I'm trying to keep these lessons shorter. I'm trying to ramble less, which I guess I'm actually doing more of at the moment. But I hope you're continuing to learn things. I've had a ton of positive feedback and some great constructive criticism. If any of this stuff is not clear, leave a, leave a comment on YouTube. Uh, send me an email. If you go to our main website at howtobuildgames.com, you can sign up for the email list there. You get the Unity packages and the code uh, for these lessons. Um, when you sign up for the email list, you also get my email. So if you want to send me an email, you can do that. Um, you can join the communities on Reddit or G Plus or YouTube or Facebook. I'm checking all that stuff and trying very hard to uh, respond to everyone's questions and things like that. Sign up for the email list on the website. That's how you get all the code and the good stuff. Also, don't forget to click the like button on YouTube. 
and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't so that you can keep up with what's going on and so that YouTube thinks my stuff is of value, if you think my stuff is of value. The next lesson will be a continuation of the 2D lesson. Again, trying to teach a couple of different things at the same time. You know, you can follow them in sequence or you know, wait until one series is done, watch all those, or, or whatever. Just trying to keep it interesting, trying to keep making a couple of these a month. I still haven't, don't have quite a release schedule, but yeah, I'm rambling again. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.